Let's try to prove that the sum, or rather the cosine of a plus b, which is the sum of two different angles, um, over the cosine of a times the sine of b is equal to the cotan of b minus the tan of a. The first thing you should notice is that this cosine here has two different angles, but we don't see this in any other location. If that's the case, you will want to immediately substitute in the uh, sum formula for it. That's the cosine of a times the cosine of b minus the sine of a times the sine of b. We mustn't forget that denominator either. Okay, so now what to do? Well, if you look at the right-hand side, you will notice that there are two terms. So what does that tell you to do? Well, what that should tell you to do is this. If you got two terms on the right-hand side, we want to somehow get two terms on the left-hand side. So what it's telling us is this. It is telling us to take this first term on top and this second term on top and separate this huge fraction so that those two would be the, the numerators. These two would constitute your first fraction. And then, these two would constitute your second fraction. You'll notice that both have a common denominator, this one, as it should be. A common mistake that people will make is they will have cosine of a just for the first fraction. And then, they'll have uh, just the sine of b for the second fraction. That's not the case. What happens is both fractions keep the entire denominator. Okay, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and reduce these two. Reduce out so cosine a, cosine a. Um, over here on the right-hand side, you'll notice that we can't do this. And yes, they're both sines, but you'll notice that they have different angles. One has angle a, the other has angle b. So they've got to be the same angle to go along with the same trigonometric ratio. Okay. So see what that leaves us. Leaves us with this. And the cosine over the sine is cotangent. The sine over the cosine is tangent. And that finishes the problem. Let's try another. Verify the identity. This really isn't an identity, but in other words, just prove that the left-hand side is equal to the right. Again, Unless you could combine the terms, in other words, unless you could actually combine A and B together, you'll want to immediately use the sum and difference formula. For this first term, this is what we get. By the way, you will notice that the sign is being multiplied to this entire quantity. So therefore, when you substitute in the cosine formula, which is all of this, we're going to put this in parentheses to go with the sine of angle A. So that means that ultimately it would be distributed to these two terms on the inside. And as for the second part, we're going to substitute in the formula for the sine. Again, note that this substitution will be in parentheses and the cosine of angle A will be multiplied to it. Okay, so let's now go ahead and distribute. Let's take the sine of a here and multiply to this entire term, and then multiply to this entire term. Hopefully you recognize, yes, they are just two terms. Since there isn't a sine in this first term here, we just simply write it right next to it. So it's the sine of angle a, then cosine a, cosine b. However, there are two sine a's, so we wind up with sine squared a. Doing the same thing for the second part, this is what we get. And just a word of caution, the negative also got distributed. So as a result, on the inside, you wind up with two negative terms, which is why you're seeing negatives here and here. OK, hopefully by this time, you would have spotted like terms. You will notice that we have a sine a, cosine a, cosine b, and then the same thing here, only negative. Therefore, these cancel. Therefore, this is what we're left with. So we have two negative terms now. 
Now note what both of these terms have in common. Both have a sine b. Now it would be tempting to say, hey, sine b minus sine b, hey, that cancels and we're good. Unfortunately, that's not how it goes. We can't just cancel them out because that involves subtraction. And you'll notice that both of these components are being multiplied to something else. And according to our order of operations, PEMDAS, multiplying comes before subtract. So we can't do that. But what we can do is we can factor it out. And in factoring it out, I also factored out the negative since both terms have a negative. So again, we don't want to forget about that. The negative here, the negative here. So now look at what we have. You should recognize this as one of your identities. That's one. So what you get is negative sine b times one and you'll notice that that finishes up the problem. Okay, let's do something a little different here. Instead of doing a proof, let's evaluate an expression. In this particular case, the tangent of x minus 30 degrees, given this bit of information about the tan of x. Let's first go ahead and apply our formula. So what we get is the tan of x minus the tan of 300 degrees over 1 plus the product of tan x, tan 300. Now whenever you're given the, the, the an angle measure, like say 300, what you'll want to do is you'll want to draw out that angle. So that's 300 degrees, a fourth quadrant angle. And the reference angle, you should note, is 60. So what we get is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Note that this measurement is negative because we are descending downward. Now the tan of 300 degrees is equivalent to this 60 degree angle that's opposite over adjacent. And what we get is negative root 3 over 1. So that's what you're seeing there in place of where the tan 300 goes. And since we also have it on the bottom, let's go ahead and place it on the bottom. So what about the tangent of x? Well, recall that's given to us. The tangent of x is 1 half, is it not? So just go ahead and write in 1 half. And just like with the bottom, we're also going to put 1 half in place of the tan x there, too. So there we are. OK, let's clean this up a bit. Negative and negative gives us a plus sign. And then positive and negative gives us a negative. And since 1 times root 3 is just root 3, we get root 3 over 2 here. Now when you see something like this, this can look pretty scary. But uh, here's, our, here's our aim next. What we want to do is we want to make this so that the entire top, what we want to do is we want to make the entire top one fraction. Likewise for the bottom, we also want to make that one big fraction. And the way we do that is to get a common denominator. So let's just focus on the top part first. We want both of these terms to have a denominator of 2. So we're going to multiply the root 3 by 2 over 2. Likewise on the bottom, we'll make the 1 2 over 2, so that way we can get a denominator of 2 as well. So therefore, we are left with this. Now you should note, on top there, you had 1 plus 2 root 3. So that's all you're seeing right here. We're just simply putting those together. Since both have 2 on the bottom, we just simply wrote 2 once. That's the whole point behind getting the common denominator. Likewise here, 2 minus root 3, we just simply collected that and put that right there. Okay, we need some space, so let's move this over a bit. There we are. Now, we've accomplished one fraction over one fraction. Now, the reason why we want to do this is because now we can go ahead and divide these. Recall that when you're dividing fractions, in this case, this big one over this big one, what you're really going to do is you're going to end up multiplying by the reciprocal of this second fraction. So what we'll do is we'll end up flipping this over like this. So therefore, as we move this over, what we get is this. Now you'll note that the twos here reduce out. 
and that in turn gives us simply this. So we get 1 plus 2 root 3 on top and 2 minus root 3 on the bottom. Now under normal circumstances we would be finished except well we don't want to finish with a radical in the denominator. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to rationalize. And the way we do that is by multiplying the top and the bottom by the conjugate of the denominator, which in this case is going to be 2 plus root 3. In other words, the sign here is the opposite of the sign here. And it's always with respect to the denominator because it's the radical in the denominator that we want to clear out. Now what happens when you do that is that the, uh, on the bottom, you get the difference of two squares. So that's really just 2 squared, which is 4, and root 3 squared, which is just 3. The top requires a little more doing. You're going to have to foil this out. So that's going to be 1 times 2, 1 times root 3. This is foiling now. Then 2, ti two root 3 times 2, and then multiply to root 3. And that would be the result. Now let's go ahead and collect some like terms, and oh, by the way, you should recognize that 2 root 3 times root 3 is 2 times 3, which is 6. So you'll see that these two here are like terms. That should give us 8. And then for the radicals, you have 1 here and 4 here, so 1 and 4 make 5. You should also see that the bottom, 4 minus 3, simplifies out real nice and neat, does it not? So what we get is 8 plus 5 root 3 in the numerator. The denominator is just 1, and because it's 1, there's really no need to write it. Therefore, 8 plus 5 root 3 is our solution. Okay, let's try this one. Let's say you determine the exact value of the sine of 165 degrees. Now, the trick to this one is to rewrite 165 as the sum or difference of two special angles, namely 30, 45, and 60. Now you'll notice that there are no two angles that we can combine to make 165 degrees. So the next best thing is to include an angle whose reference angle is one of those three angles. Let's try these two. 30 degrees obviously is one of those angles, but 135? Well, you'll see why we chose that in a moment. Go ahead and write out your formula. And then after we do that, what we want to do is draw a triangle for each angle. And since we have two different angles, 135 and 30, we're going to have two triangles. That's 135 degrees. The reference angle for 135 is 45. And now, hopefully, you understand why we chose 135. 45 is a special angle. Now that we have these triangles drawn, let's go ahead and evaluate each of these four. Let's start off with the sine of 135 degrees. The sine of 135, or let's refer to 45 degrees, opposite over hypotenuse, is 1 over root 2. The cosine of 30 degrees, adjacent over hypotenuse, is root 3 over 2. The sine of 30 degrees, opposite over hypotenuse, is 1 half. And lastly, the cosine of 135, adjacent over hypotenuse, is negative 1 over root 2. Okay, now you'll notice that we have a root 2 in the denominator here also over here. So what we want to do is we want to clear those out. So we're going to multiply each respective fraction by root 2 over 2. Focusing on this first part, multiplying across root 2 times 1 times root 3 is the square root of 6. On the bottom here, you'll notice that just these two here will give you 2. Root 2 times root 2. So that's 2 and then times 2, which is 4. So root 6 over 4. As for the second part, you'll note that we have this plus sign, but we also have a negative. So our answer is going to end up being negative. You have 1 times 1 times root 2, which is just root 2. And the denominator will be the same, which is 4. So that's really it. 
You might also see this answer written in a different manner because of the fact that these have a common denominator, or even if they didn't have a common denominator, a lot of times um, people will join these together as one fraction. So you might see it as root 6 minus root 2 all over 4. This is perfectly fine. By the way, there is another way that we could have approached this problem. Remember that in the beginning we stated that you're to write 165 degrees as the sum of two angles that are special angles. And we chose 135 and 30, but really there's more than one choice. You could have, for example, chosen 120 and 45. 120 has a reference angle of 60 degrees. You could have also chosen 210 minus 45 or 225 minus 60 because again the reference angles for these two are special angles. If you use any of these three combinations instead of the 135 and 30 you still would have gotten the same answer. Because of that you have more than one way to do this and if you were to look at say your neighbor's work and see that it's different that doesn't necessarily mean that your neighbor is wrong or that you are wrong. There's just simply more than one way to approach this problem. That's it for this one. I'll see you next time.